This is the grocery restock plus some fun birthday mm -hmm. gifts because you turned 24. What, me? What, me? Hello, good morning. Um, I just came out of the shower, as you can see. Excuse the mess in the back. We are on a day off and we decided that we're gonna head to the beach, which will be our first beach day this spring, summer season. Um, just for a few hours, just to like shut down, power down, get some sunlight. But I wanted to just kind of take you through a few things that I'm reading right now. Let me get some books and um, I'll be back. Okay, so I finished two books um, so far in April. So reading is looking like it's on the low. Finished uh, Sisters by Daisy Johnson, which is kind of like a short, almost like thriller, horror kind of book. The Offspring of Shirley Jackson and Stephen King which is not normally um, what I read. <laughs> I read this one and then I recently finished Citizen, an American Lyric by Claudia Rankin. And this is uh, poetry um, dealing with what it means to be a black citizen in the United States. Um, it's also multimedia, very, very powerful, but both of these I will talk about in a wrap up, so I'm not gonna go into it right now. Current reading, I'm a little bit like jumping around. I'm sort of juggling four books at the same time, which I never do that. <laughs> I don't know if it's necessarily successful or a good idea, but I just, I can't seem to find exactly what I wanna read. And I got Ohad a copy of Outline by Rachel Cusk, translated to Hebrew, so I'm very jealous of the Cusk reading in the house right now. I guess I can just read Transit, which I haven't read, which is the second one in the Outline trilogy. Maybe I'll pick that up, like I need a fifth book right now. So I'm, I'll just kind of share with you what I'm reading simultaneously. So one of them is Poetry by David White. David White is one of my favorite favorite poets and kind of like philosopher. I first found out about him through a podcast on On Being with Krista Tippett. I love On Being's podcast. And there's an amazing um, episode with David White and he just has the most beautiful speaking voice to listen to. And then with Krista, who I also love the way she speaks, it was just a really great, great podcast um, and I've listened to that episode like four times and I send it to a lot of people. It's a book of poetry that I got from my father um, for Christmas. Um, so this is The Bell in the Blackbird. It's just different sections of poems. I would say that his poetry is kind of like self-help poetry if I could like categorize it as something in the way that like it's sort of like advice on how to live life, but through really beautiful poetry. I wouldn't say that this is my favorite collection that I've ever read of his, but there are some really strong poems on grief. So yeah, I'm only about halfway. But anyway, I'm reading that. And I'm also reading this um, proof that was sent to me by Lolly Editions, which is a great independent publisher in London, who I really love and who I love speaking to on Instagram and they kindly sent me this copy of Amelie Smith's Threadripper. I asked them for a digital copy and they were like, I think you want a physical copy, 
which I can understand because it's also multimedia. It has like illustrations or paintings or um, different drawings and it's in a very fragmented um, style. I am a little over halfway with this one and I wouldn't say I love it. I think this is not for me. <laughs> if you like algorithms, like if you're fascinated by algorithms and technology, um, this might be interesting for you. What they call a double-stranded novel. Um, so on the left side of the page, there's one novel kind of, and on the right side, there's a different one with different font. And I'm not sure if you're supposed to read it like the whole left side first and then the whole right side. I'm not doing that. I'm reading it like, like you would read a normal book, but it's going back and forth and I don't know. I think maybe I'll, I'll try to finish it because it's the pace is quite fast because it's fragmented. So I, I feel like I can finish it even if I'm not jiving with it like completely. It's kind of about weaving, like literal weaving, but also digital weaving. And it brings like a lot of historical women, um, like brings them out of history and puts them in this book. And I don't know, I don't really know what to make of it, to be honest with you. So that's that. Then I'm reading Falling Out of Time by David Grossman. It's strange, I'm reading two men. Normally I don't read any male authors, just by the way of what I read. Um, and I'm reading two men this month. David Grossman is an Israeli writer, originally from Jerusalem, given to me by my dear friend Ziv, and he really loves this book. Um, and it's sort of like written kind of like a play in the terms of like, it says woman and then she speaks man and, or, or cobbler or duke or midwife or town chronicler's wife. So there's different kind of characters, um, but it's written fully in poetry. I think it's super, super, super poetic dealing with also theme of grief. Um, so very beautiful, interesting, raises a lot of questions about grieving and bereavement, memory, how can you reconnect with someone? Is there a way to reconnect with someone who has passed? So very strong imagery. Again, I'm not like fully obsessed with it. <laughs> anyway, I need to finish it also. Last one that I picked up is on my Kindle and it's Spring by Ali Smith. We know I'm a big Ali Smith fan and I'm reading her seasonal quartet and we are in like kind of the spring-ish months. So um, I felt like it's fitting to read Spring but I haven't picked that up for a few days either. So I don't know, the reading's everywhere. Also bought Ohad and Ali Smith called The Accidental which I haven't read, but I loved the cover and the Hebrew edition. You have a Cusk and a Smith, which is great. Booktube friends are gonna love that. Hopefully we'll get some more reading done today on the beach. Yes. Um, that's the plan. I need to put on sunscreen on my face. This is a, a reminder for myself. Israeli, these are two Israeli um, siblings who are artists. They're photographers or they do other kinds of yeah. art? Different, different, different disciplines. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Ohad was recently in a like choreography piece where you kind of looked like this figure, like very kind of crouched down in like a sweater on a podium, on a podium like sculpture or something. So it seemed very fitting. Um, so this is The Accidental by Ali Smith. Hebrew. And this is a beautiful cover of Rachel Cusk's outline. This is a, a photograph by Man Ray. If you're not familiar with Man Ray photography, you should definitely do a Google search. Um, so that's beautiful. Oh, and Ohad found this crazy, like falling apart, completely vintage Vogue from the 60s, you said? I think it says 1961. Somewhere. Yes, 1961. On the front, it says 
Take No for an Answer by Joan Didion. So I'm, we, I'm de we definitely have to find the Joan Didion in here and read it. So this is crazy. Mm -hmm. wow. All the updates. Um, I feel like, yeah, I haven't really talked about what I'm reading and my Instagram is probably super confusing because I'm like, oh, I'm reading this. And then the next picture is like of a different book. And then the next picture is like a quote from a different book. So I'm, I'm, I'm jumping around. Catch you later. Hope you're all having a great Saturday. Although you won't watch this probably on a Saturday. Anyway, bye. Hi, so it's, uh, ooh, this hair. In general, this hair really needs to be washed right after I film this. Um, it's Monday afternoon. I wanted to come on here and just update you on reading, which I finished, managed to finish that one day at the beach, um, the David White poetry. I'm gonna bring the book here. Okay, so, um, The Bell and the Blackbird, we spoke about this. And overall, um, as you can see, there are some like underlines and beautiful sentences. As a whole, um, I wouldn't say that this is my favorite poetry of his. Um, if I would give you a recommendation, I, well, his essays um, called Consolations is amazing. So I would say definitely go for that. Um, but also he has a poetry book called The House of Belonging, and House of Belonging itself, like the title poem, is one of my favorite poems of his. Um, and in general, I just liked that collection more than this one. Again, similar to the last poetry book that I read last month, if you like nature, poetry, um, definitely you would probably like this one. Maybe I just was like a little overdone in that department by the time I got here. And he's very, very, very profound. So there are like some very profound sentences, very stunning, like literally stun you. Um, but on the other hand, sometimes it's profound in the way that I don't, I, I didn't, get it. It didn't really make me feel anything because I don't need to get it, I just need to feel something and um, I didn't feel something in all of these. Meh for me. Um, I feel like I've read um, better work by him than this particular one. Haven't really felt like going back to the Thread Ripper book and this was by my bed and I'm maybe in more of the mood. I'm in a creation right now for my own um, stage work like contemporary dance piece, opera piece, kind of. Um, and so maybe I'm more in like a research reading mood. So I picked this one up. Oh, another rep for Sunnies. CJ Reads, we love you, you're hot. This is Theater and the Body by Colette Conroy with a foreword by Marina Abramovic, who's my favorite, um, one of my favorite performance artists, Serbian performance artist. I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but I got this in a used bookstore and it just seemed really interesting to me. What do we mean when we talk about bodies in theater and how does theater affect the way we think about the human body? Bodies are vital elements of theater production and spectatorship, but the body is not just physical, it is also conceptual. 
Drawing on many examples from contemporary performance, theater in the body is a provocative starting point for understanding the surprisingly complex relationship between theater and the body. Concise and clear, this book explores the revealing tensions between the body, bodies, language, representation, and movement in theater. So obviously being a dancer and choreographer, the body in relationship and at the meeting point with theater is very relevant for me. It's literally what I do. So this is super, super interesting so far. Many different questions like, what is the role of an audience? What about documentation? Are the photographs taken of the performance a work of art in themselves or just documentation? So many, many interesting points. I'm literally like 10 pages in. I woke up super, super early this morning, like at, I don't know, 6 a.m. or something and like had the urge to read, which I don't know. I mean, I, I like to read with my coffee, but normally that's around like nine, not six. So that was kind of strange. This morning I went to a gel nail appointment. Ahad and I were like, let's go get our nails done. So we did that. Um, I never do that and I've never had gel. So I lost my gel virginity today. I took a shower. Um, if I get some more reading done, I'll, let, I'll come back, but I feel like this is not so much a reading vlog as it is kind of just a, a catch you up on the things that are passing through my hands in the terms of books lately. Um, so, but yeah, I wanted to kind of upload this tonight. So if I, before this evening, come up with something else that I need to share, want to share, wow, I really need to do something about this. Okay. Bye for now. I'm out of the shower. The bangs are down. Looks like it's a good hair day. We'll see once it gets bigger over time. Last thing I wanted to um, mention before I um, log off is that I've been playing with the idea of doing a Patreon. Very inspired by everybody's Patreons and yeah, just like content that people are putting out. A lot of videos and subjects that I want to talk about and make. Um, and as much as I love doing these YouTube videos and I will always, well, I can't say I'll always, but there are some like maybe art subjects or talking about what I do, um, dance, choreography, more about the books I read, maybe books that I don't talk about on here, maybe, um, Maybe also, yeah, things to do with art and like, like, I don't know if I read a really, really eclectic book, um, I'm not sure it's interesting for everyone to watch a video like that. So I'm, I'm playing with the idea of maybe um, like including also more research stuff that I do on Patreon for people that would like to. Or, and like write there and maybe give more recommendations, maybe film maybe um but could be kind of another platform that's like an addition to this channel just for the people who would be interested so i'm thinking about that and the obvious thing being that i love to make videos and i will do it for free but um it would be nice to have some kind of financial support even as a really side gig from making videos and talking to the camera because i do put in a lot of effort and time. As I continue to create, um, I need to pay people that I want to work with and yeah, like the proceeds would go to me being able to make the art that I want to make um, as an individual independent creator. Let you guys know, keep you updated. I don't know if that's something that you would find interesting. Um, I know it's not everyone's thing. <laughs> I know you already spend subscription services on Netflix and Audible and stuff. So why would you want to do another one? But anyway, so I think I'm signing off now. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.